in the name of Jesus, this new month will be a beautiful one for us. In the name of Jesus, the lines are falling onto us in pleasant places. We have a goodly heritage in the name of Jesus. All right, so are you going to just take a moment to speak to this month for yourself, right? Life and death are in the power of the tongue, the Bible says, and those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. This is the month of July. Everyone knows it as the month of July, but it can be something else for you. Do you want to speak to it right now? It's the power that God has given to you. And honestly, it doesn't cost you anything to say it. Your mind is probably playing a trick on you and saying, what's the point? What do you lose by doing it? What do you lose by declaring what this July would be for you? Speak concerning it. The Bible says that God brought all the animals he created to Adam and Adam named them and whatever he called them became their name. He's brought this month to you. What do you call it? And no one would do this for you. It is you. It's you. What shall we then say to these things? Speak concerning this month. And speak favor concerning it. Speak blessings concerning it. Speak open doors concerning this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God said to Moses, say to these people, as I've heard them say in my hearing, so will I do to them. Go on and declare concerning the month of July. For the average person, it's after the month has passed, we then talk about it. For the believer, we speak to it first, and then we see what we have said. Go on and speak concerning this month of July, regardless of what June looked like for you. Regardless of what the first six months looked like for you, begin to speak concerning the month of July. And the blessings in there, the peace in there, the joy in there, the strength in there, declare concerning this month exactly as you want it to be. Cast your mind to the first Sunday in the month of August and begin to think of July as past and declare the things you want to see in it. Because God is committed to doing what you ask. He said you do not have because you did not ask. Begin to ask right now concerning the month of July. For the surprise that you trust God for. For the blessings you trust God for. Declare according to the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. For the month of July. We thank you for January to June. As past tense. And we thank you for July. Because even when we don't know what tomorrow holds, we know who holds tomorrow. And we know it's you. And nothing in the month of July can catch you unawares. And so, Lord, we come to you as your children. And we declare indeed that this month is for good. We declare it's for peace. We declare it's for prosperity in the name of Jesus. That in this month of July, someone will find purpose. Someone will know you more than ever before. In this month of July, we will see new dimensions of you. We will experience your faithfulness again in the name of Jesus. In this month of July, every home is preserved. All our kids are safe in the name of Jesus. In this month of July, new business opportunities, new jobs, new admissions, blessings like never before in the name of Jesus. In this month of July, someone is free from sickness. Someone is free from nightmares. Someone is free from depression in the name of Jesus. Death sees you and passes over in the name of Jesus. In this month of July, someone has prayed for something for months. And this month of July, the answer will come in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. And Lord, as we go into your word in this service, Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. As we go into your word, we receive light. We receive understanding in the name of Jesus. Let it be, Father, that as I speak from here, your Holy Spirit will teach each one in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray in this service that if there's a concern in the heart of anyone that will prevent them from hearing your word, today, Lord, we remove those concerns. We declare in this service, prayers turn into testimonies 
in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done in this service. Let your people be blessed. And let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can I hear it louder? Amen. Amen. And so we're starting a new um, theme this month. And it's on impact. Last month we thought on new creation, right? Um, and that was beautiful. I don't even know which one was more powerful between the Sunday teachings and the Wednesdays at Bible study. I really don't know. Um, we didn't record those, right? Bible study? We didn't. Sorry. <laughs> but that, see, Bible study is at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. It happens strictly online. And so you can actually be just in front of your phone, in front of your computer, be eating, be doing whatever you want to do, and be a part of it. It is powerful, right? It's nourishing. Um, we have conversations there. We ask questions there. We get answers there. Um, and honestly, last month was amazing. Like every month indeed. So you might want to join that. The teachings are on our YouTube page for last month. What does it mean to be a new man? Okay. What does it mean to be born again? What does it all entail? All of that is there, so please um, take your time to check it. You can also listen to those sermons on Spotify, right? Just search for Peace Church Global on Spotify, and we have those sermons there. This month, we're teaching on impact, and I titled this one, Light of the World. Light of the World. Isaiah chapter 60 is where I'll read from. We'll read verse 1 to 3. And then we read Matthew 5, verse 14 to verse 16. Isaiah 60, let's read together, I want to go. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Matthew 5. From verse 14, if you are there, let's read together. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. All right? Um... And so this whole series is premised on one fact. You are an asset. Right? That's the foundation. And that fact refuses to take into consideration the fact that you may not have a lot of money in your account or whatever experience you have had or whatever you've gone through. This fact ignores all of it and says despite all of that, you are an asset. Someone say amen. amen. It's actually not a prayer. You're an asset. Whether you like it or not, you are. Right? Okay. I have often said here, and maybe some people will hear me say it for the first time, that I do not agree with the idea that you give your life to Christ just to make heaven. There's something faulty with that equation. Why? You came from heaven. God could not have sent you from heaven to come here so that you could give your life to Christ, so that you could go back to where you came from. There's something wrong there. Okay? He sends us here. So when Jesus did a lot of the things he did, and when he preached, he kept repeating, the kingdom of God has come to you. The kingdom of God has come to you. What's the concept of the kingdom of God? You go back to Genesis. He created that space. He put man there to tend it. And that space, if you read the description, was a perfect space. It was a perfect world. No sickness is there, no disease is there, no problems, no depression, no sorrow, nothing like that there. That was the space he put man in. And he didn't just make man like every other being. He said, let us make this one in our image. So he is our representation here. That was the concept. And so in an ideal world, man was supposed to be God's arm here, making things work. But something happened. Man fell. And something just changed in that equation. And so what's the concept of being born again? 
you then say to God, you know what, regardless of all that has happened, I choose to be like that original plan. And then he takes you and enlists you in his army. And then uses you to bring his kingdom to bear in people's lives. So when Jesus was healing people, he was saying to them, the kingdom has come to you. In other words, in our kingdom, there's no sickness. In our kingdom, there's no pain. That's what I've brought to you. I've given that example a few times, you know, here. How that when I was back home in Nigeria, we would travel, you know, um, almost every summer. And one summer we got back home and I said, you know what, um, I want power in this house 24-7. And so you had generating sets and you had inverter and all that. It was just so that once the main source went off, the next one came on. And we had it like that, right? I said, what were we trying to do? Within that kingdom, we we're trying to create another kingdom. It was not perfect. And so we're in a place now where we don't need to do that to have 24 hours power. Because this kingdom is already equipped for it. Heaven is equipped for that perfection. Earth is not. But when you're born again here, what you're trying to do is like what we did. That in this whole mess, we are going to create that space. Just so that while we are living in this imperfection, there is a little sign of perfection in there. And so Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And then he says, the glory of God has risen on you. Then he says to you in verse 2, just so you don't miss the point, see, darkness covers the earth. And thick darkness, King James says, gross darkness, the people, right? And so he's saying, I'm telling you to arise and to shine, not because that's the in thing, not because it's a trend, not because it's what everyone is doing. In fact, I'm asking you to arise and shine because the world is going in the opposite direction. And that is when the glory of God rises upon you and God's people can shine out. You know, it's very bright here right now, so if you put on a candle, maybe some may notice, maybe some will not. But if it was pitch dark, you put on one candle, everyone sees it. And so the light does not even have to be a lot. But it makes a difference, right? And in this world that we live in, where there's indeed a gross darkness and people struggling with many issues, I hear suicide rate is at an all-time high. And there's poverty in many parts of the world. Depression also is at an all-time high. Knowledge has increased. Mental health has reduced. And our children have been introduced to strange ideologies. And you read some things online and you, you just freak out. And it does look like, yes, gross darkness is actually coming. But then we are reminded, according to Ephesians 2 verse 10, that says we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God had foreordained from the foundation of the world. Interesting. From the foundation of the world. You know, I heard a preacher, uh, Bishop Noel Jones, say that the gift that God has given to you, you know, Romans 12, 29 says they are without repentance, right? He said, yes, that because it's from the foundation of the world, that the enemy can't do anything about it. So it goes for your character. <laughs> yes. I had never thought of it before. That was pretty succinct, you know? So, it's there from the foundation of the world that he has sent you to do certain things. Okay? That's why the fact that it was dark. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void and dark. But the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In other words, that something is dark is not new to God been there from the start. Things get dark. He didn't stop his spirit from moving. Things get dark. He didn't stop God from speaking. And it was that darkness he treated first. Let there be light. And the Bible says, and there was light, and the next thing, and God saw that it was good. And so gross darkness covers the people 
And it means that many people will then be praying to God for some light. And God's answer to the prayer is to look at his own children and say to them, Arise, shine, for your light will come. No, has come. And the glory of God will rise? No, has risen. Arise. And that first part is where the work is. To get up. You know what it feels like on Monday morning? Arise. <laughs> Thank you. It can be hard. <laughs> so arise. Especially when there are many things weighing you down. But it says arise. Shine. Because your light has come. And when God tells you to arise like that, it's because he has given you the capacity to. You know what happened in Acts chapter 3 verse 7 when the apostles reached that guy at the gate called Beautiful. Peter said, look on us. Silver or gold we do not have. What we have we give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. What did they do? They pulled the guy's hand and it was beautiful. That, that, that illustration is just so sweet. His leg had a problem. And they said, arise. And you would expect them to pull the leg. No. They pulled the hand. Because it's the leg that was not working. A part was working. Listen, God will never get you to the point where everything is not working. Never. It will never happen. Genesis 1 still explains that. When he said, oh, this water is a problem. Let's gather the water to one side so that dry ground may appear. Then he said, let that dry ground bear fruit. It will never happen that everything is down. But you know what the enemy does? The one part that is down is where he puts your focus. So he came to Eve. As God said, you should not eat of any tree. She said, we can eat of all except one. Ah, this one. This one. You have to eat it. If you don't eat this one, you won't be like God. This one, the one you lack, is the problem. Every time I read the story of Esther, and I read about that man, Haman, I am reminded all the time about the need to focus on what I have more than what I don't have. Hey man, God promoted second to the king. Everybody would bow before him except Mordecai. Only Mordecai in the whole place. Only Mordecai was not bowing to him. And a man had a problem because of one person. He said to his wife, the king has called me to a banquet. I am the only noble in the whole city that I invited. He said, yet all these things do not mean anything to me as long as Mordecai is alive. And follow that one till he died. Saul, follow David. So much that they saw him pooing in the bush. He left the palace. I went to pooing to find one person. One. And he had the whole city, the whole country available to him. And we've got to be careful because the enemy puts your eyes, your laser focus on that one thing that you lack. And sometimes we say to you, give thanks to God. And you go, for what? I don't have a job. It's because you have sanity. You know you don't have a job. If you didn't have sanity, you wouldn't think of job. And you have health. You know the funny thing about health? We say it all the time. If you was number 20 on your list of priorities, the day you lose it, it becomes number one. Straight. It becomes number one. And whatever amount they ask you to bring, you bring. You know, you don't negotiate with doctor. They say $1,000, they say, can I bring five? 500, can I? No. <laughs> then you begin to have money you didn't know you had. Say, ah, that's my uncle selling. <laughs> that's my auntie seller. <laughs> Just bring all the money. But you have the health. It doesn't occur to you to thank God for it. Because the enemy keeps your eyes on what you lack. And today I've said you are an asset. And somebody thought, me. <laughs> me. No. I am $5 million away from becoming an asset. <laughs> but you are an asset. Amen. And so he said, arise. Shine. For your light has come. And the glory of God has risen on you. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 5 that we are the light of the world and that no one lights a candle and hides it. In other words, I cannot save you and hide you. 
You are my star. You are my hero. You are the one I should put on billboard. You are the one I should show to people. I can't hide you. It doesn't make, he said, no man does it. I, I can't possibly do that. Right? He said, people do not light a lamp and put it under a boat. They put it on a stand so it gives light to everyone in the house. And so he said, in the same way, let your light, because there's a light in you, shine before others. And how does it work? That they see your good deeds and glorify your father. Because at some point, people see the things you do and they know there's someone behind it. They know there's some wisdom, superior wisdom given to you. There's some superior understanding, superior grace given to you. But you feel that the whole essence of your being born again, number one is to make heaven. Number two, because someone preached to you that Jesus will butter your bread and sugar your tea. Now your whole aim is to get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. Christianity and selfishness don't go hand in hand. And I, I can say it in different formats and languages for you to understand. You cannot be a Christian and be selfish. You cannot be a Christian and live for yourself. As he is, so are we in this world. You must be a person that someone prays for something and God can call you and send you to them. If you cannot do that, we may need to examine your salvation. The foundation may be bad. Someone that says it's only me. Some of us want to live this Christian life in a way that nobody should stain us. God should, mm, I'll go to church on Sunday, give him his minimum wage, come back. You should not stress me. Okay? Yeah, we can be like that. I heard a preacher say many years ago, I was, I think, a teenager or so. The man said some of us are very careful so that we won't have any marks on our body so that we can arrive in hell in one piece. <laughs> What a violent preacher. <laughs> but I've never forgotten it. That the, the truth is, when you are a Christian and following God, there may be a measure of discomfort somewhere. If anybody ever preached otherwise to you, I apologize on their behalf. Read through your Bible. And you don't get to practice Christianity on your terms. No, it's on his terms. But you cannot say, Lord, I give you my life 100%. Some of us give 20, some give 10, some give 5 and collect it back. No, if you give him 100%, then it's no longer yours. You will be uncomfortable from time to time. Can I bring it home? Sometimes you will go and apologize to the one that offended you. It's not fun. Sometimes you will give your last card. Sometimes you smile at someone you know hates you. Sometimes you'll be praying for someone who needs what you need. I, I, I gave that illustration some time ago. My, my pastor friend is here. Pastor face it a lot. You are looking for one dollar. Someone comes and says, Ah, Pastor, I will die. Hey, I need two dollars. The Spirit of God leads you to pray for them. You pray for them. They come back and say, Ah, Pastor, I got the two dollars. And you think, Ah, God. Am I your stepson? <laughs> What's going on here? That's part of it. And in all of it, that person comes dancing over the two dollars and you're expected to rejoice with them. Indeed. Someone offered me something many years ago and I heard God tell me, don't take it. So I said, so where will it come from? <laughs> I didn't hear any answer again. So he meant it was not coming. This work is hard though. <laughs> <laughs> you will face discomfort from here. And you know what? You don't have to agree. You already face it. Who has a perfect life here? Everything working perfect. You face it already. So just turn it to God. <laughs> that uh, Christianity and selfishness do not work hand in hand. And God expects us to shine our light because it has come and the world is dark and someone needs to see what he has given to us. And so I listed a few points here on how we can shine this light. I'm looking at the time. <laughs> I remember the warning, don't worry. 
first thing, I'll see how far I can go on this and then we can continue it after now. First step to shining your light. Think big. Think big. There's a story in Genesis 15, verse 1 to 6, that I'll quickly read. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield and your exceedingly, or your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. Now watch this, verse 5. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And then that popular verse, verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. So that was that gist. You know, the way King James put it, when God said, I'm your shield and your exceeding great reward, Abraham said to him, according to King James, what would thou give me? Seeing I go childless. And apparently it was that seeing that God needed to do something about. So he took him out and said, come see something else. Count the stars. See, you look at yourself based on where you have been and where you are. I see you based on where you originally are from the foundation of the world. It will take you a while to get there, but I'm the one that gives you a baby today and calls him a man because I have seen the end from the beginning. And so the fact that your beginning is small does not make my own vision for you small. No. So he said, although your beginning may be small, yet your later end shall greatly increase. You've got to think big and think beyond where you are now. See, sometimes the problem we have is that our experiences have colored our expectations. Especially as no one in your family, your village has done certain things. So who am I to do it? Right? That's always the way it works. But God does not see us as too small. And in any case, he said you are the salt of the earth. Has it occurred to you that there is trouble if the quantity of the soup is the quantity of the salt and you put all that salt in that soup? Who will eat it? It won't work. The salt does not need to be as much as the soup. See, it will be small, but it will make a difference. And so when he called you the salt of the earth, he knew what he was saying. That you are small, and I like you small. <laughs> that size is just what I need. Amen. You know, it's not a big testimony if Goliath killed David. He was big enough to. He was experienced enough to. It is a story that blesses us. Why? Because the small one Kill the big one. That's where the testimonies come from. The things I am naturally unable to do that God did through me, that's where the testimony is. Okay? So, you are not too small for what God has called you to do. You may feel too small to have an effect, but you are not. And one of the reasons, and I'm happy that we have our kids here, some of our kids, eight and above, it's always good to see you guys. <laughs> All right? One of the reasons God wants us to be like little children must be because they don't recognize obstacles. Have you, has it occurred to you? And they can imagine anything. Ask them today, what do you want to be? You say an engineer. Tomorrow, a pilot. The day after, doctor. Okay? As a day, my son told me he wanted to be three things. He wanted to be a footballer, a pilot, and one other thing. One person, one life, you know. They don't, they don't see obstacles. They believe it and they say it boldly. But as you become an adult and if you grew in Nigeria, you wrote jam like six times. It begins to change. Little by little, you know. And after a while, you say you are the admin in your WhatsApp group. Okay. Because as life knocks you, you reduce your vision. 
you reduce sorry sorry <laughs> see adulthood makes us more conscious of trends than our dreams okay the moment the dream comes there's enough experience in you to fight it the moment it's landing it's dead on arrival it lands and it first hits nonsense give me something else what is that and it appears that the ones that seem to be really wealthy and get things going are the ones that somehow manage to hold on to that thing. And it just never leaves them. But you, you say, face reality. The one you have faced up to now, what has it done for you? God sent you and packaged you and gave you something big to work with. And we have to be careful to retrain our eyes to see beyond ourselves and see past our present realities. Someone say amen. I'll take one more point and I'll wrap it up here. And um, the Sunday after Stampede, we'll take it on from there. Start small. First thing I said was think big. The second one is to start small. Okay? Start small. Though your beginning may be small. Zechariah 4.10. Your latter end shall greatly increase. Big things usually start small. And that's why the vision remains intact. Okay? And anything worth building takes patience. So we must be comfortable with the idea of building patiently. And sometimes we get overwhelmed by the size of our vision or the size of the problem. And we forget that God needs our baby steps to make a big change. There's a story in 2 Kings 7. When... The king of, um, I think it's Aramia, had come to um, Israel and, you know, blocked their food supplies and there was famine and all that. And the Bible says four lepers came out and said, let us go to the camp of the Arameans. He said they may spare us and give us something to eat. Or they may not. He said, if they don't give us, they will kill us. He said, but if we stay here, we'll still die. Right? How do they say it? All die and I die. Right? And so they said, well, since there's a little hope there, let's go. What they did not know was that God needed them. Because the Bible says that as lepers, four, were moving, God amplified their steps. The Aramean camp were hearing many footsteps and told themselves, you know how rumors fly? And they didn't have WhatsApp that time. Imagine they had WhatsApp. <laughs> they said, the king of Israel has gone to hire five other kings and their armies are coming. Those are the steps you are hearing. And all of them ran away. Four lepers who moved. That's it. Who moved. I have said it repeatedly. That book after the book of John in the Bible is called what? Acts of the Apostles. Not plans of the Apostles. Not desires of the Apostles. Not what the Apostles wish they did. No. Acts. You know what they call analysis paralysis? You sit down, you think about it, and you think about it, you know? Some of us here can fly a plane in our mind. It's like if I just do it like this and do it like this, get up, arise shine. Start small. No matter how big it seems, start small. Are you called to write books? You can start by writing short posts on social media. Are you called to teach? You can start by gathering your ideas together. Are you called into a big business? And then look for other people that are doing it and start learning from there. You say, do this thing. You say, well, it can take me 10 years. And by the end of 10 years, I'll already be 50 guess what? Whether you do it or not, in 10 years you'll be 50. So are you going to be 50 doing it? Or 50 complaining and still not doing anything? That 50, you will attain it. Be willing to start small. Okay? And one of the ways it works is the first thing I said. Think big. Start small. Right? That you're in a space and you know that your time there is measured. There are bigger things. 
but I will not while waiting for the bigger one because I do here. There are many people that need those baby steps, need that word of encouragement, need that prayer, need that token. Many people. And God's been wanting to see you as an Ananias that he can tell, get up, go and meet Saul. That was the major thing Ananias did in the Bible. That Saul became Paul. He did the big one. But neither did that Ananias. And God had to be able to reach him and say, go there. There was a Barnabas that also took Paul to the disciples. And that pretty much was his major work at that time. And your work may not be so humongous. Maybe a little. But you do it as God has asked. And it's amazing the fulfillment you find in it. Why? Because the moment you give your life to God, your pleasure comes from doing what God wants you to do. See, does salvation mean you will prosper? Absolutely. The Bible makes provision for that. Does it mean you will live long? Yes, the Bible makes provision for that. But I promise you that you will have money cannot be the reason Jesus died. No. People were rich before he came. There are people who do not call on God who are very rich. Yes, to have money follows principles. Be born again, don't be born again. Follow principles, you will have it. Standard. Long life, people were living long. Methuselah, he didn't know Jesus. 969 years. No. He saved you so he can use you to save others. And he is the only one that uses you and you don't reduce. And when men do, it is well with you. And so, what we are asking today, as I said, if I say good thing, I, I don't need to worry about the topic for the next one. I'll just continue from here. Right? <laughs> but if you won't take anything away from today, just take this. I am an asset. God needs to use me. Right? In Mark 11, Jesus said, go and get that donkey. He said, if anybody asks you what you're doing, say, the master needs it. It wasn't want. No. Needs it. Because the Bible had already prophesied that your king is coming to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. It had been written. It had to be done. Okay? And the Lord needed a donkey. If he could need a donkey, he needs you. He needs the ones that call on his name. The ones that carry that brand. Christian. And you've got to be useful to God. Someone this week has to be able to thank God for you. Okay, so where do you even start from? What skill do you think you have? What gift do you think you have? Let's start from there. And if you have absolutely no idea, how about waking up in the morning and praying for some people? That costs you nothing. Doesn't even need any skill set. Okay? Just commit them to God. And the more you do that, the clearer things get. As I said, we we'll continue on this one upper week. But I believe so strongly that God has started something in someone's heart. Can we bow our heads and talk to God at this time? And I want you to just consecrate yourself to him again and say, Lord, use me. You know that song. If you can use anything, you can use me, right? Do you want to talk to him? I'm an asset. I'm not a liability. I am God's representation on the earth. The light of the world. The salt of the earth. I'm a blessing. I'm not a problem. I'm an asset. Lord, show me who I am to me. Open my eyes to the gifts you've given to me. Deliver me from self-centeredness. Deliver me from small-mindedness. 
and use me. Use me in this city. Use me in this world. Use me in this generation. Make me an answer to people's prayers. Use me, Lord. We'll be taking the communion now. And then we'll pray wrap up the service. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, turn my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, Hallelujah. So Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Right? He said, as often as you eat it, remember me. And it's not just to remember him, it's to remember what he came to do. To remember his works, to remember his power. I'd like to ask you right now to pray over the communion material in your hand. And if there's something in your life that is not consistent with what Jesus came for. In other words, if there's a sickness in your life, and the Bible says it took on our infirmity, but our diseases, it says it was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes we were healed. And so you want to pray as you take this communion, Lord Jesus, your body was broken, the mind should not be broken. And you pray concerning that. If you are going through bouts of depression, you want to talk to God right now that as I take this communion, Lord, you are my source of joy. You said you will give peace that surpasses all understanding. As I take this communion, give me that peace. If you are going through any pain or confusion or hardship, then speak the word of the Lord concerning it. And say, Lord, I use your body and your blood as contact. And I declare a change your story. Say these words right now. And then we'll take the communion. And trust God. Trust God Monday to Sunday. That he will show himself. And he will answer the most complex prayers. Someone is here under the sound of my voice. You don't even know how to say that prayer concerning what's bugging you. It's too difficult to put into words. It's complex. You can't even say, Lord, this is what I need you to do. But God hears your heart. And he's making it simpler than you ever thought. And he's fixing it. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we take off your body and your blood, We declare we are one with you. We declare that your death will not be a waste in our lives. That we are light indeed. That we are salt indeed. That we are blessings indeed. In the name of Jesus. You are helping us to take our eyes off ourselves and put our eyes on purpose. Lord, we ask because your word says in Matthew 6, that we should not seek after what every other person, the Gentiles, seek for because you know our needs. And so, Lord, we declare that those needs become small today in the name of Jesus. Let it be, Father, as we take this communion and signify oneness with you, let our hearts pant for you. Fill our minds, fill our thoughts in the name of Jesus. Please go on and take the communion.
this is my your burden you took from me and if you've taken it please be on your feet with me and as I eat it I remember you this is your blood you shed for me and as I drink it, I remember you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. And Lord, according to your word, I proclaim your blessings upon your people. I declare that indeed you are blessed in every way. In the name of Jesus, the word says, Beloved, it's my desire that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I declare that's your testimony. In the name of Jesus, today I declare concerning someone here saying, Yes, I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to indeed arise and shine. God will show you which way to go, He will show you the first step to take. In the name of Jesus. There's someone here feeling, I need help. And you're asking me to help people. Today I declare that your problems shrink in size. In the name of Jesus. This new week, good doors are opening to you. Doors of grace. Doors of favor. Doors of mercy. In the name of Jesus. I declare that every day this week you will wake up knowing what to do. You will not be confused. You will not be lost in the name of Jesus. I declare that this week you are preserved. You are delivered from error in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. It is well with everyone in your home in the name of Jesus. This week you will get closer to God. You will go to him in prayer and you will have encounters. You will open the word and it will open up to you. This week, someone here is struggling. You are, you've been struggling with a habit. And every time you think you are out of it, you get stuck in it again. This week, I declare your freedom in the name of Jesus. Someone is here and you are under heavy debt. Bible says you may not see wind, you may not see rain, yet the valley will be filled with water. Today, I prophesy miraculous supply in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, resources come to you. You will know how to go about it and you will pay it all off in the name of Jesus. I declare concerning someone trusting God for favor in the job situation. This week, God comes true for you in the name of Jesus. And if there's anyone that wept this morning before coming to church, today, the Lord turns your morning into dancing. And your joy is full in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, can we take our closing check together as we leave? The Lord bless me and keep me. The Lord makes his face shine on me and be gracious to me. The Lord turns his face towards me and gives me peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.